Hello everyone and welcome to the first ever outdoor show. In these podcasts we'll be going over what's been happening in the outdoor industry, uh, news articles involving the outdoors and also giving a recap of the outdoor community a separate page. So without further ado, let's get into it with the outdoor news. So first things first, let's have a look at the European Outdoor Film Tour. The film tour has been running now for 19 years, bringing hand-picked films and documentaries, outdoor adventure travels to the big screen. It's looking pretty good. You can go and watch the nominees for this now and vote for your favourite. Moving on, you can now see the live weather conditions from Snowdonia Summit on their new webcam. So just go to snowdonia.live to see all the data here live. And then you can also go to their webcam and see what the uh, the weather's doing on there. So I think this is very cool. And at uh, Bowiswith is the best in Wales, which is best walking neighbourhood area. It's been rewarded in the Ramblers Britain Best Walking Neighbourhood Award 2019 in public vote to find the most walker friendly neighbourhood in the UK. So I think Aberystwyth have really stepped up accessibility more for pedestrians than they have cars and cyclists in their city, which is pretty good, it's a step in the right direction. The Ramblers are calling for a new national debate on access to green spaces. The land for the many is a new independent report commissioned by the Labour Party published today on the 4th of June 2019. It proposes radical changes in the way the land in the UK is used to govern it, including access to the countryside and parks in urban areas. Mm. The report contains a number of Ramblow's policies as well as fresh thinking. Vanessa continues. We really hope this report will spark a new nation, a new national debate in the importance of access to green spaces in our towns and cities, as well as the countryside of our public rights of, of way network. We stand ready to play our part and work with the political parties and partners to make great access to sea, towns and countryside in reality. So this is, a, this is something to watch. Politicians urge to grasp the chance to control widespread vehicle tracks on the hills. I think this is a good thing. There's always a lot of vehicle tracks up here for access reasons up in Scotland. Um, it does cause fragmentations between different habitats, different species of animals, um, especially motorways. Motorways are like the main source of fragmentation of uh, habitats. The coalition of 10 Conservation Charities is calling the Scottish Parliament to grasp golden opportunity to induce stronger controls over vehicle tracks in the hills. It basically goes on to say the Scottish Parliament is set to vote at some point for amendments to close loopholes that allow landowners to build many of the controversial tracks without planning permission. Research by the Scottish Environment Link Hill Tracks Group has found that tracks continue to creep further into wilder landscapes and the, plan, and the planning loopholes can lead them being sadly sighted and designed. But yeah, they do, uh, they 
to ruin the scenery and the landscape when you see tracks all over the place. Scottish body calls time on antisocial camping. Now, this is one where so you see the same sort of crowd, the festival goers, and leaving their stuff behind. Mountaineering Scotland has called for action to be taken against the growing issue of dirty camping, which sees irresponsible campers leaving rubbish, fire damage, toilet waste. I mean, there's no exception for this, really. There should be like some sort of penalty fine. It's already a legislation covering antisocial activity. What we need is a coordination of resources to enforce it. I mean, it's pretty sad. Stepping up towards the uh, Olympics now, and Sean Coxie may have secured herself a temporary place in. Olympics, which I'm really looking forward to seeing this. So she's got a place, but it's only temporary at the moment. I think she's got to win a few more rounds to secure that. A daily 20 minute stroll in the grey outdoors has found to dramatically lower stress and boost well being. Scientists claim to have discovered that spending 20 to 30 minutes amongst nature could cut levels of levels of the stress hormone cortisol by about 10%. The new studies found that after 30 minutes, well being benefits of being outside continue to increase at a sharply, uh, sharply reduced rate. The Times reported spending time connected with nature previously been suggested at a low cost way of combating health issues including high blood pressure and mental health problems so get out there and uh, get in your 20 minute walk a day so now we move on to the truth about Everest now when I was a kid I liked the idea of going up and doing Everest not so much these days. So I came across this article. Are regulations really necessary on Everest? How bad are the queues? How many dead bodies are up there? The media attention. There's a lot of noise on Twitter. It's from clients who have been guided up Everest trying to sound important. your view on this would you like to do Everest let us know down in the comments and these are a few comments I found about Everest discussion madness who will never want to be a part of this fictitious circus looks like Snowden summit after a train arrives not my idea of fun enough people get in trouble in the UK hills for lack of experience skills common sense and the proper gear Consequences on Everest are much more severe. Perhaps it needs to be a limit on summit licenses, a strict criteria for those making the ascent. But money talks loudly. So there are new proposed rules for Everest. A spiking deaths on Everest this year provoked media attention and outcry and opinions. At the press conference last week, the Polish Ministry of Tourism proposed stricter access regulations. But what should change? And will anything actually happen? Photographs of queues on Everest and tales of stepping over dead bodies aren't new, but numbers of men. So this kid right here, this is Oliver Wheaton, is the youngest person to climb the map of Hoyt. Just 
eight years old. What's the matter for that? Very classic scholar. I'm one day I want to do this climb myself much more than I want to do Everest, so sure. Lots of famous climbers have done this climb as well. Like Leo Holding, climbed the mountain boy when he was 11 years old. And I've actually had the, the privilege of meeting uh, Leo when he was promoting his, uh, I don't think it's his latest film anymore, but Mirror's Wall, I got to go and have a chat with him then uh, this event. So, uh, I'll finish off the news by showing you a trailer of Mirror's Wall. There you go, where you can go watch the full thing now for free. Just mirrors wall. It's on the Berghouse YouTube channel. So I'm really pleased with the way the outdoor community has been growing so far. It's been running for just about two months now. Uh, seeing some really good engagement. I'd like to see the people members talking back and forth a little bit more. Uh, between each other, but that's all right. Uh, as you can see here, Ryan Outdoors has won the top post of the month of August with his Powell Hiking Trail. I suggest you go check out the whole series if you haven't already. There's some really good uh, posters on here. Um, I really enjoyed watching the jungle surfing in Daintree Rainforest. That was really cool seeing all the mechanics of uh, the winches and the zip lines and stuff. And obviously, a nice backdrop of the rainforest there. And if you're a fan of drone shots, I recommend checking out Comrade Keeley. I uh, did some fantastic work of landscapes and scenery, so I recommend that. And there's loads of other good stuff to explore and find on the outdoor um, community. And if you're not yet a member, I suggest coming over and taking a look and getting involved. 
So unfortunately that's all we've got time for in this outdoor show. If you've got any recommendations or feedback for this, then uh, let me know down in the comments. And I thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye for now.